Alright, so for the battery systems of the robot, he's going to have um, wall outlet only mode, and then he'll have battery mode. He's going to prioritize wall outlet mode. When the wall outlet's unplugged, he'll use battery mode. When the wall outlet's plugged in, it will be in charge of providing as much power to actual actuation of servos and all the parts as it can. And then it will also have the job of charging any batteries it can with whatever juice it has left over. So power from the wall has to be wired into use and charging. Obviously the priority will be for use and then it, it will charge a little slower, trickle charge. Um, So it's forking, and then for use, w so we're going to be converting 120 volts, 15 amps, a standard outlet, to 6 volts, and then 120 times 15 is... eighteen hundred watts six volts at eighteen hundred watts so that'd be three hundred amps would be its highest amount of amps it could release which actually is not enough for the whole robot but it might be enough if the robot's just like doing little stuff like seated activities but like one DeWalt drill motor can peak out at like 60 amp draw like it can use that much amps so if we're gonna have like four of those in a thigh I mean that's 240 amps in just one thigh and that's that's not speaking of the other hundreds of motors throughout the robot so that that w actually wouldn't be anywhere near enough to power the robot, but the robot's not necessarily doing jumping jacks or push-ups. He, he could be just, you know, drawing something, and in that case, he'll just use the power from the wall to be drawing or whatever he's doing or talking, using his hands to talk, and then whatever energy is left over, he would use to recharge his batteries. So what we need is for the brains, let's draw a little brain, the brains of the charging system to decide, you know, how to divide up the parts that, that's being used and the parts that's for charging from the wall. The used is actually going to fork out again. It's going to be um, 6 volt use and 18 volt use because we're going to be using 18 volt motors and 6 volt motors. Um, so it will need to have the ability to create both of those voltages. And it's going to be sending these out to clusters of 30 motor clusters. Um, And 18 volt ones won't really be in clusters, maybe three motor clusters, if anything. Those are the big motors, so, th so they're not very often going to be an issue as far as like needing a lot of them. They're really powerful. 
And then as far as charging goes, the charging will go to the batteries. And the batteries are going to be like in clusters of like, um, there might be like 15 clusters of batteries. And each cluster would be like eight batteries. So there would be eight, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Um, so that's, um, 8 times 10 is 80, 8 times 5 is 40, 120 motors, I mean batteries. That's kind of my, my estimate right now. So the brains will need to be able to charge the batteries, um, individually like separately they're not being wired like that so I shouldn't even draw like that the brains so like if one battery is dead well first of all let me explain how the clusters work well I don't have to explain it okay so if one battery is dead right coming from the brains it will charge that battery and this battery will take over for it. So this one's dead and he's being charged. So each battery will need a line from charger to servo to one of the servo clusters. And then if if he's dead, he'll he'll break that line and be charging. And when that happens, this servo will tie in, he'll open, and then he'll be going to that cluster of 30 motors, or 3 motor cluster. And so, you'll have 8 backups. So once this one's dead, and this one's dead, and this one, and then this one, and then this one, until th the last battery goes out. And so each time one goes dead, he'll close himself off so that he doesn't get under um, too deeply discharged. And this this brains the charging will will just charge from the top down, whichever ones are low. So we'll have eight backups now. Each battery will have. Um, It'll be like 6 volts, 2500 milliamp hours, and be capable of 110 amp burst, and 50 amps sustained. Um, so one of these batteries could power one of the 18 volt motors. Oh no, actually three of them would be for one because it has to be 18 volts. And these are only six volts. So yeah, it'd have to be three. But um, so anyways, 2,500 milliamp hours, which is 2.5 amp hours. Um, and a cluster of 30 motors is gonna draw, well each motor draws a max of one amp. So that'd be 30 amps max. So let's just say if we're over amping and whatever, 40 amps. So 40 amps, um, 2.5 amp hours would handle 40 amps for, so it'd be 2.5 amps for one hour. 40 amps would be I believe it was five minutes. No, was it five minutes? Um, let's see. So 40 amps would be... Yeah, it was about five minutes, okay? 
five minutes. Five minutes, one of these batteries can handle at, um, let's just say 35 amps. Okay, five minutes it can last. That's why I have so many batteries. So each one can last for five minutes, powering its cluster of motors, or if it's doing the 18 volt motors, it'd be less. But, um, Five minutes, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So that'd be 40 minutes of total runtime for one of these battery clusters. So 40 minutes it could run the 30 motors in the arm, in one of the arms, before it'd be out of batteries. And since the body's covered in motor clusters, um, each one of the motor clusters needs to have 40 minutes. So the body could use, or the robot could use its whole body for 40 minutes where everything's moving. And then he'd be out. And that's at 120 batteries. And this is just estimates. Um, now, another cool thing I thought of is well, what if this battery cluster, we wanted it to help out this battery cluster, which ran out early? And this battery cluster was the right arm. Okay, and the right arm, you know, it's used all the time. The robot's painting, the robot's drawing. It uses its right arm a lot. And this arm ran out quicker. The rest of the robot, the bot was just sitting down. His leg batteries weren't even being used. So he could take his leg batteries and reroute them to help out the left arm motor cluster, or the right arm motor cluster. And so he would detach them from the leg and attach them to the arm. So he would cut off that and he'd open up new channels for that, for the arm. So we wouldn't need to do that for every single battery, have it be able to tr um, handle the work of every other battery. But certain modes where we find, man, the robot spends most of his time drawing all day and he's sitting down and his calf muscle batteries never do anything so let's start using those for the right arm so he'll have more battery life then we'd be able to tap into that so that that would give more flexibility to make more use of the battery life we do have so that rerouting to give the batteries multiple job opportunities like shifting their focus is something I, I want the brains of the robot to be able to do and it will do that through MOSFETs. MOSFETs are little on-off switches that are solid state. And so they can open one one routing and close another routing. So that's something we want to do. But I don't want to do that for every battery being able to handle every other cluster. Because then we're talking about just too many MOSFETs. Too much, um, too much added weight and complexity and possibilities for failure when we really only need you know some some degree of that application specific so we won't be too focused on that initially but we can add it later so what's great about this is we can start out with like two batteries in cluster one two in cluster two and none of the other clusters and as we add more clusters of servos and more parts to the robot like the legs and other arms and little back muscles or whatever, we'll be able to add one battery to the top of each cluster. So we'll have five minutes of runtime with with one battery for all the body parts. So a robot could run for five minutes, full body usage, and then he'd be dead. But as we start adding depth to the clusters, that will increase our runtime on different body parts. So body parts we find that burn through their batteries the quickest we can make their clusters a little longer but on average I, I figured each cluster gr responsible for each motor cluster of 30 motors will be about eight eight batteries deep that's like depth so we've got width and depth the width covers all the different groups of motors the depth covers how long those groups last as the batteries need to get replaced as we move down the line 
And so the brains of our balanced charging system will need to be responsible for intelligently rerouting batteries, intelligently charging and balancing the batteries, and intelligently having batteries take over for other batteries once those batteries are wiped out. And it should probably choose from the batteries randomly because if it always uses the top battery of a cluster first, that battery is going to run through its total usage cycle too quick. I would rather replace all the batteries that are on the same time because the top battery would, would be needing to be replaced too soon that way. Because it'd be, it'd be getting the majority of the use. Maybe we'd never even use the the bottom two batteries of a cluster until, you know, it'd be very rare that we'd run out of power to the point where we're using these bottom two. So we should probably select them ran at random. So our, our system needs to do all of that. Handle all the charging, the rerouting, and the different batteries taking over for one another. Another benefit of this system, rather than just routing these all in series, is by having just one active battery at a time and the other is just kind of chilling whether they're charging while he's working or whether they're just sitting there is they get a chance to cool down if we had them all wired in series they'd all be losing charge at the same rate and they'd all be staying hot all the time they'd never have resting period where they're just chilling so I want most of the batteries to be inactive and I won't have them wired to one another they'll independently attach to their motor cluster when the battery before them is worn out and it's time for a replacement to come in. So that will ensure the the least amount of heat being produced. Well, no, the same amount of heat's produced, but different batteries at least get to cool down for a long time in between usage. Conductive charging? Yeah, I guess that's a possibility, but I really wouldn't want him to have to stand on a stand. If he if he's um gonna be a mobile robot, uh extension cord's better. He'd be able to charge in the car, charge at the store, charge at a restaurant. He wouldn't have to be at home on his special stand. Cause it's not like he's gonna put himself away and be done. I want him to be active at all times, always doing stuff, always going places and being active. So he should be able to charge whatever room he's in. So it's actually more versatile just to have him use standard extension cord to charge. Honestly, conductive charging is just like a fancy thing. There's really no need for it. Like self-driving lawnmowers will just drive into a little bay and park themselves and start charging. What difference does it make if they drove into the bay and plugged in a, a cable or if they drove in and a plate was nearby enough to the charger. It's like, it's just fancy. It doesn't really, the only way that'd be really beneficial would be if your entire house, all the floors of the house were a charger. So he could, he'd be able to walk throughout the entire house without any cord and be charging all day long. Then that would be nice. If I made the entire floors of the house a charger. But, I mean, that sounds expensive and unnecessary. It's not that big of a crime for him to plug himself in with an extension cord throughout the day here and there. So these are the challenges we have to um, conquer with our intelligent power supply system. And that's about the math of how it's all going to work and the number of batteries involved.